I'm Joy Gerrard. This is my exhibition, Precarious Freedom, Crowds, Flags, Barriers, at the High Lanes Gallery. It's been an incredible year and a half. It's been a time of testing and changing and uncertainty. And I went through a lot of different titles for this exhibition. And Precarious Freedom, it gave me quite a few things. First of all, it was in response to a text by H Hannah Arendt in, in her book, Between Past and Future, and she uses this uh, phrase precarious freedom in relation to the French resistance and to this idea that kind of protest and revolution appear uh, through time and it's kind of like a mirage, something that people kind of grab onto. So precarious freedom ha it has that kind of philosophical reference. And then, of course, it, it means what it means. You know, our freedom is much more, more precarious than we realize, you know, whether it's as women in relation to reproductive rights, whether it's our freedoms just to move around during the time of COVID. So it became a more uh, open title. When people visit the exhibition, the first thing they'll encounter is, is different sets of drawings. Really all the work in the show is made over the last 18 months. And I've split these in the different spaces into what I call kind of zones of contention. So we have work that related to my time in Paris, relating to the pension protest in Gilo Jaune. Black Lives Matter was one of the most important protest moments during COVID and the previous 10 years. Um, so that's represented by flags and a protest in Belfast that I attended myself. And then a really important part is the work relating to women's issues, reproductive rights in Poland and women's safety uh, relating to Sarah Everard in London. So there is about 25 drawings alongside the two major pieces, which is Dark Europe, the installation of 29 flags and Barrier, which is the main painting work within the exhibition, but works as a 3D sculptural shape. I spent uh, early 2020 in Paris at the Irish Cultural Centre. And while I was there, uh, I began a series of drawings of the flags that were hanging around the city. And I began to paint them at a small scale in black and white. And while I was there, Brexit came to pass. So I came up with the idea of some form of installation uh, of flags, which the colour had been stripped. And then of course, that was early in 2020 and we're now sitting in the gallery and it's uh, the middle of 21 and we've had Brexit and we've had COVID. And during that time, time kind of stretched and I was able to really test that piece over and over again. I made it as a printed work. I made models and then eventually I came to the conclusion that it needs to be hand painted. So I worked in the studio and I made each flag as a hand painted representation. And then suddenly the piece became, it became other things as well. And um, within each flag, each flag has its internal borders and by hand painting it, the material is breached. So the work kind of moved almost from a kind of response to Brexit to a COVID response, I think, and it becomes a little bit more it's austere and it's about mourning and it's about something becoming a singular sculptural shape. Um, and then of course in the gallery, I have installed the Union Jack, but I have placed it in a separate room on a ceremonial flagpole. And in a way that's kind of to reference that a lot of the things that have happened in, in the UK, you know, Brexit and also maybe the COVID response in different places, you know, is to do with its over-dependence on its imperial past, on the fact that it feels it's singular, you know, so it's, it becomes a singular entity away from the larger installation. The invitation to respond firstly to the High Lanes Gallery and then for that to tour onto three venues, um, I found that really challenging, but a challenge is always exciting as well. I think maybe I've taken some of the strategies that I would have used in my public art practice and tried to transfer them into this space in High Lanes and then also be always thinking about the fact that this would go on to the Galway International Arts Festival. Um, and then that is a very particular kind of larger space and then over to Kilkenny as well. So, I mean, I think the specific things that happened um, in the work in response to the High Lanes are, uh, first of all, the flag piece, you know, it, 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 it has become quite austere and uh, in response to the ecclesiastical space, you know, and maybe kind of thought more about kind of religious banners. So that influenced the piece. 
And then the other thing is one of the other main pieces, which is called Barrio. And it's an unfolding eight part screen and it shows protest that moves through central London. Uh, it's both a vigil and a protest. It's the day after the Sarah Everard vigil in Clapham Common, where there was disproportionate use of force by the police. And the protest becomes linked with the police bill that is unfolding in the UK Parliament at the moment and may become law in September. I had always envisaged uh, some kind of um, barrier within the space. And uh, the idea of the barrier is both to kind of reflect you know, what happens within protest, the fact that both uh, the architecture and then also um, the structures that are used by the police crowd barriers are kind of used within protests. And also that many of these uh, protests are about barriers in life, you know, barriers to women, barriers to black people, you know, different kinds of barriers. So I wanted this piece to be a, a physical encounter in the space. And the, the architecture of the High Lanes lent itself to that, the fact that I could actually place a barrier in the end, you know, right across the altar. So the fact that it was, that it's site specific and then touring had a really profound effect on the way the work developed. And, and it was really important for me to try and marry, you know, the ideas behind the exhibition the structures like the barrier are the, the way the flags are installed and then finally the material, the way that they're made.